can find authentic conversations with inspiring humans around spirituality, emotional wellness, and alternative medicine. Today, I have a beautiful soul and inspirational success story with me, Kendra Perry. She's a functional health coach turned online business strategist for other health and wellness coaches and practitioners. She's a creator of the Health Coach Accelerator Program, which we'll dive into more later. So be sure to stick around to the end to find out about that. And she's also an alternative and plant medicine enthusiast, which we talk a lot about in this episode. And I'm really excited to hear about her experiences and have her share her wisdom. So thank you so much, Kendra, for being here. It's such a delight to have you. Welcome to the show. Hey, Christy. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm so happy you're able to make it and get to connect with you again after all this time. It's been a while. It's been like 10 years. Has it actually? Yeah, I guess I well, left Nelson 10 years ago. Yeah, that, I really? Yeah. 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 Crazy. Totally. 12 years where, ago, actually. Wild. Oh where God. does the time go? That's so unreal. And so much has changed. You have accomplished a heck of a lot in that time. So let's just give homage to that. And congratulations to you for a lot of success and changing people's lives and doing unreal things. And yeah, I want to touch in on that. And today we're also going to be talking about plant medicine and alternative medicine and removing our blocks. And I know you help coaches with that. And I know both of us have had to go through that. I'm still going through that, removing my blocks personally. Yeah, me, me too. I've got a lot of shit to work on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Holy crap. It's never ending. <laughs> it um, never ends. <laughs> it really is. It. And the acceptance of that is part of our process and part of our work, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Cool. Well, do you want to touch in on your history and how you came to get to the amount of success that you have now and then we can dive into all the wild and weird stuff (laughs) yeah no problem so you know I think I kind of became an entrepreneur by accident because initially like through most of my 20s I worked in forestry and I was kind of a seasonal worker and when I moved to Nelson um, I moved here to ski I moved here for the ski season and the year that I moved here I was skiing at the hill and this guy came up to me he says hey you're a great skier do you want to be in photos and movies and I was like "Uh, uh, yeah Okay, <laughs> like, cool. Like, this no sounds like, so amazing. And, you know, I've been a skier my whole life. I come from a ski family. I, I competed um, internationally for mobiles and like half high big bear in high school. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd always been like love skiing and always kind of wanted to get somewhere with it. So I kind of started imagining this like very glamorous lifestyle of traveling the world and getting paid to ski. So I sort of shot that winter with anyone who would take me. And then at the end of that winter, that was, I believe, 2011. I jumped off a cliff. I injured my knee. Uh, I blew my ACL and needed reconstructive surgery. So I sort of found myself in this position where I was like, well, fuck my ski career. Probably not going to happen, at least not for years. And I worked in forestry. So obviously something you need a knee for. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So it was, it was a pretty dark time because, um, I, you know, I was single, I couldn't work, I couldn't ski. A lot of my identity was tied up into being a skier because I had been my whole life and I just really didn't know what to do with myself or what, how to make money. And I ended up on medical unemployment for, I think, just over a year. Uh, during that time, because of boredom, I actually started a health blog. And at the time, I'd been having a lot of health issues like acne and insomnia and energy issues. And so I kind of started this health blog and started writing articles every single day. It was like, I'm going to be a blogger. Oh, consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. you're on your butt and my salary. Right? Like, oh, you froze. Exactly. Exactly. I needed something to do. And I enjoyed writing. I've always been a writer. And I just was like, okay. Um, I'm going to make money as a blogger and then never really figured that out. I really didn't know what I was doing, but, and then I, I learned about health coaching and then learned I could probably start an online business and start taking clients that way. So essentially with no business model or marketing experience, I just sort of figured it out. Like it took me a while and there was a lot of uh, trial and error, uh, but I did eventually figure it out and managed to build like a multiple six figure business doing health coaching. And then in 2019, just my interest sort of changed. And I just kind of realized that health coaches have a really important role on this planet. So I I realized in 2019 how much health coaches struggle to build their business. And I believe health coaches have a really integral role in shifting active consciousness because when people are sick, I mean, it affects mental health, everything. And I know when I was sick, I didn't get to talk about anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I realized that I could really make an impact or a bigger impact by empowering them to help them build successful businesses so they can actually reach the people of whom they want to reach. And, you know, through that whole 
experience building my business, I was going through some really dark times with my health. I mean, seven years of pretty severe chronic health that actually was triggered from that knee surgery that I had. Oh, and yeah. I'm, it was really rough, but I'm truly grateful for it because that's what sort of pushed me to better myself and, yeah. you know, like go through all the healing physically, emotionally, spiritually. And yeah, I mean, I'm truly grateful for it because uh, it has helped me evolve, but it was rough. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And it's funny too, because do you know Jeremy from Men and Tubs Calendar? He had, yeah, he was on my, he was on my podcast like a month ago. I didn't even piece it together about you two potentially knowing each other, but he has a very similar, and it's, it's true about going through the darkness, going mm -hmm. through that period, like you've hit all well, a bottom, but not the bottom. And it's just having to rebuild after all of that and not having your health is huge. And that affects our mental health. So you, and you were able to like slide through all of that. So physical health goes first. And for you, is it mental, emotional and spiritual kind of followed after that? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned Jeremy because my boyfriend's the January guy. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's so perfect. He's the guy in the ice tub. <laughs> oh, cool. I will link to the calendar again for anyone who's curious. We're talking about men in tubs. There's some uh, some very risque looking dudes in tubs. <laughs> and then oh, I love it. So awesome. And the concept was great, too. Just helping men Absolutely. with their emotional health. So very cool. And I'm glad that all ties in together. Yay. Shout out to Jeremy. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, it's really true, though. Our physical health, like when we don't feel optimal and I, it's a chicken and the egg for me because I have mm -hmm. been emotionally unhealthy in the past and it's mm -hmm. triggered my physical health and vice versa. So, you know, whichever one it is for whoever it is, it's still reversible as long as you make those steps and like take the steps and remove the blockages, which we'll kind of get into a little bit. And those blockages are like to our health, but they also end up blocking other areas of our life, which mm -hmm. is what I'm personally getting through the tail end of myself. And so I'm really excited to hear how you were able to overcome all of this stuff. So what was your first step with getting physically better? Yeah, the physical health was first. And I feel like my sort of like emotional, spiritual health, that's been more so in the past like couple of years. Yeah. Um, I've always been kind of very emotionally blocked, very like strong, like don't want to uh, show emotion. I hate crying in front of people. And, uh, you know, I'm very science minded. And so when I got into health coaching, I went into functional lab testing. And so oh, wow. I love data and, yeah, nice. you know, numbers. And so the lab testing was great because it gave me the information. Because at that point, when I was having health issues, I was eating like so healthy. I was going to bed early. I was doing all the things that I still yeah. felt like so chronically sick. So, you know, it was doing the lab tests and learning that I was full of parasites and that I had all these mineral imbalances and I was toxic in metals and I had undiagnosed Lyme disease and well, just like mold and like crap. all the things. Like I was just, and I was mold. fucked up. Mm -hmm. what, what is that about? How do people get mold in their bodies? Um, well, anything that has water damage, you can get mold from a lot of, I think something like, I've heard a statistic for the US that 50% of homes contain mold damage. Now I was tree planting, living in like moldy Atco trailers. So there was that. I lived in a basement that flooded. So there was that. I also used to trim weed. And yeah. oftentimes it was moldy. <laughs> <laughs> I was growing weed, so I don't know. I think that's how we met. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that are there. totally uh, a lot of but a lot of yeah, friends made in sheds. <laughs> I was yeah, I was wondering whatever whatever happened with that because we had a couple mold like our we had a pretty big shop and and everything, but I know there was mold in there. And how do you so you can test for that? I didn't realize that. That's yeah, you could test for that. I mean, it primarily lives in the sinuses and the GI tract, like the whole GI tract. And there's a, a really strong like biofilm, which makes it hard um, for people to get at it. But it causes a lot of inflammation in the body, really wears down your immune system and, and just can cause like some really severe issues. And so I, uh, I had a lot of issues with that as well. So being able to see those things on, but I wasn't really open to like the emotional, like spiritual stuff for a very long time. And it was actually in 2020, I just before 2020, I got into human design for a bit, which was kind oh, of interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Um, if people are familiar with that, I'm a projector. So, um, you know, and living okay, with we, a generator. I just got into it a little bit. Let's break it down a tiny bit for the audience, just so we know sure. what we're talking about. But yeah, so I mean, I'm not an expert in human design, but it's essentially like a combination of, I think it's like Chinese I Ching, astrology, Kabbalah, and there's one other system that's kind of chakra system. 
Okay. And it's like someone has kind of combined all of these and you have a different, there's five different energy, energy types, generator, manifesting generator, manifester, projector, and reflector. And it's all based on like um, the time and place you were born in the world. And um, a projector, which is maybe 15% of the population, essentially I don't have access to sacral energy or my own energy. So I'm always taking an energy from other people. And so it's just the projector essentially has to be really intentional with how they use their energy because they're not really meant to work. They're more meant to like guide other people to do the work ah, and, rest, and rest a lot. Gotcha. Um, so I've always, and a lot of us are socially conditioned to be generators, which are like the workhorses of the world. And that's like majority are generators. And so I, I think, yeah, I think I was a manifester. Oh, cool. About, it's a yeah. cool type. Yeah. Yeah. Very <laughs> cool type. I, yeah. I did it like a year ago and read up very little about it, but I'll have to thank you for reminding me because I'm going to dive back into that again. Oh, it's super fascinating. It's like the ultimate personality test, really, if people are into that. But so I started learning more about how to act as a projector. And then in 2020, I joined a leadership program with uh, Ruby Furman, and she's one of my great mentors. And she really pushed me to uh, focus on like mental and spiritual health and actually is the person who introduced me to the Cambo. She's the one who sent me the, the Hoppe. So, I mean, that's kind of when it began. And I mean, I still struggle. I, it's, it's very much an evolution for me. Like I still struggle um, to get out of my head and like into my heart, into my body. I struggle to stay grounded sometimes. And, uh, you know, I struggle with, I, I struggle with it and it, it's the spirituality has been interesting because I would say like two years ago, I was essentially like pretty nihilistic in a lot of ways. I was raised Anglican in the Anglican church. We used to go to church every Sunday, but I wouldn't say my family was super religious. You know, we'd go every Sunday, but it but wasn't like, like appearance more. So it was like a community, a community thing, community. you know? Yes. Yeah. 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 And then kind of when we were maybe about 12, my dad was like, fuck this, let's go skiing and like whatever. And I used to just kind of go on Christmas Eve with my mom so I could like belt out yeah. Christmas carols and not be judged yeah. by my horrible tone deaf voice, essentially. <laughs> I love the rationale around that. That's cute. Awesome. Yeah. And then what's interesting, because then I, you know, I became very like, I mean, you know, I have a lot of, I think everyone knows that organized religion can um, be, it's interpreted like these religious texts in a certain way that is not always like helpful for people and can be very divisive and shaming and that sort of thing. But I had, I ended up with a lot of really negative opinions about the Bible. And I was just like, fuck the Bible and la 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 and like stupid God and whatever. Like it's obviously been interpreted, but you know, it's in the past, like even just six months, I've been really thinking about that. And I'm like, I've been poo pooing on the Bible, but that's not my thought because I've never read the Bible. So whose thoughts are those? And I think on, yeah. I've been coming back around to God and the Bible and other religious texts. And, you know, it's more about kind of this all knowing source rather than some dude in the sky. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just been interesting because I think. Um, there's a lot of social conditioning around that. And, you know, I don't identify with organized religion, but, you know, if you look at the Bible as a manual for how to live your life, then it becomes a very different thing. Absolutely. Just mm -hmm. yeah, the basic constructs and structures of how to treat, how to be in the world and be with yourself. I think there's some valuable knowledge in that for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think all of the twists and renditions and testaments have all skewed away from the original uh, intention, which is really sad because I, I haven't actually read it either. Just snippets of each one and watching mm -hmm. the transformation through a couple verses and just how they've managed to manipulate it over time. But that's organized religion for you and that's for profit and all of that so that's a whole other rabbit mm -hmm. hole of, of stuff but I'm glad that you found something that resonates with you that allows for you to see outside of just physical body and form and however that comes to anyone is always a positive thing in my books and so yeah that'll be a great segue into alternative and plant medicine and when did you come into all of this area <laughs> i guess <laughs> <little> area <laughs> this area um you know it's been pretty recent so i mean i'm someone who abused drugs a lot in my 20s you know i was a big partier yeah. big drinker i think yeah. yeah we probably met at parties too we probably used to party together and um you know it's like when i did drugs it, you know it was the party it was to have fun it was to suppress like not feeling confident not feeling good enough like whatever, all of that. And uh, I, I learned about plant medicine, you know, just living in Nelson, I've heard of people doing it, but I, I never was always kind of like adverse to it because I stopped partying and drinking um, when I started having my health problems when I was about 27, 28. So I don't really 
I'd have the odd glass of wine, but I haven't really drank in a very long time or done any drugs beside maybe a few like weed edibles or whatever, the odd <laughs> joint on the beach or something like that, right? <laughs> oh, it's good for you. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, you know, just because of that really unhealthy relationship and um, that sort of like abusive tendency, I've just kind of been like, nope, nope, nope. And just, you know, not been into it was like, nope, nope, nope. And then, you know, just kind of over time, hearing about people's like ayahuasca experiences just started becoming more interested and was like, oh, and asking more questions and kind of noticed that I was getting more interested, but not really ready to take action on anything. But it was very interesting. And this kind of happened in September when, um, you know, shit kind of went weird in uh, British Columbia. Yeah. And I was, yeah, I was just sort of feeling like this need to have some guidance or something. And it's like, I woke up one day and I'm like, I'm ready to do ayahuasca. Like, I think I want to do it. Um, and I still haven't done it. So, yeah. <laughs> I still haven't done it, but I had that sort of like readiness. And then, uh, a couple of days later, uh, this mentor of mine, Ruby, um, you can follow her on Instagram. Her handle is at Ruby for, um, at I am Ruby. She's great. But anyways, she was, um, posting stories cause she was doing a Cambo facilitator training in Colorado. So mm-hmm. Cambo for anyone who's interested, it is an Amazonian frog poison essentially. So what they do is they take the frog and I'm kind of not a- cool with how, you know, it gets a little suspended and they have to extract mm-hmm. it, but that's, that's how the poison comes about and apparently it was discovered by uh, a shaman who was on ayahuasca and had a very sick village and he had a vision of a frog curing the village of of their ailments and was able to take that vision bring it into reality and save his village so that's the history of cambo for anyone who's interested yeah anyways we're gonna get into a little bit more of what happened but it's a it's an experience so how was your experience yeah well you know it was interesting because i i saw that this mentor of mine was sharing this and then she was um showing stories of how she'd set up her uh, space in austin texas to facilitate these ceremonies and then all of a sudden i was like i'm gonna go to austin texas even though there was a lot of things changing with travel and stuff like that in Canada. And so I planned this whole trip and then got shut down by changes in restrictions in the U S and that sort of thing. And so had to kind of cancel my trip like a week before I was supposed to go. Oh no. And I was really upset because it's like in that moment, I felt this like hit, like that's what I need to do. And so I sort of realized that I was like, okay, I think it's, it was the Cambo. So I contacted my friend locally who had uh, done it in the Kootenays and it was connected with a facilitator and scheduled three sessions in a week. And, um, oh, and so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like night after night after like, was it? I did. Um, I think there was a couple days between each, um, yeah. oh. in Austin, I was supposed to do it every day for three days. Yeah. But once I kind of connected with this facilitator, I, my schedule had kind of, I put some things in my schedule. So that's kind of how it worked out. Oh, she called it. She said it was an intensive and, but yeah, it was a very weird experience the first time because I was literally like driving to this house in Nelson thinking, well, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you froze at the weird you know, time. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this with this stranger. And I'm like, what? This is crazy. Like, I'm, I was so nervous and just didn't really get what I was doing. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's the only way I can describe it is like a death and rebirth. It's like horrible and amazing at the same time. And so what essentially happens is um, they prepare the medicine, they take the frog um, uh, secretion and they mix it with like an Amazonian wood. And it's because the secretion is very liquid. And so they they absorb it into the wood so they can um, put the points on your skin. Which are burns, by the way. Yeah. We use incense to Mm -hmm. to kind of burn little holes. I've got my little... Oh, yeah. I can probably still see mine a little bit. Not really. Um, maybe in the sunlight. <laughs> yeah. So they just burn out the superficial layer of the skin. It's, um, just kind of burns a little bit, not a big deal, but then they, they mix the, uh, the secretion into this wood and they place it on the points. And I got five points on my left bicep. Five too. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah. The first time. And, uh, you start feeling it instantly. Um, it's very, did she feel all of yours at once? Sorry. To, to I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So mine, mine went in gradually. So I get gradually hands in your facilitator. Yeah. She, cause it was, yeah. Your time and it was yours too, but she was just curious as to how it would react and mm. some people can have allergic reactions. So if anyone is going to do Cambo and this is not medical advice, please do not. This is not um, advice yeah. of any kind to go out and experiment with medicine. But if you feel called to it, you know, by all means, it's your life. 
Um, but my practitioner personally, she did one to make sure that I, nobody had an allergic reaction mm-hmm. to there was three of us girls. And actually, I was the only one who hadn't done it before. The other two went pretty quickly. Yeah, because some people that very rarely it's a very rare occurrence can have. A it seems smart to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It definitely seems um, smart but, to do that. Yeah, definitely. But I and I just continue with yours. But I'm um, just I just wanted to put that in there in case anyone was yeah. going to do it. I'm like, maybe don't do it all at once just in case. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, obviously, like, uh, make sure you have like a well-trained uh, practitioner. Yeah, I did that's another thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did a quite a bit of research and um, I, I felt comfortable because my friend had recommended this woman and uh you know before they apply the medicine they make you drink quite a bit of water like i think i drank about two liters of water because you're gonna purge and you don't want to be like dry heating um but so they put the medicine on and it's like heat like instantly for me it was instant i was just like instantly feel like your heart starts racing like you're doing a cardio workout and you feel really hot and sweaty and i think i mean it's hard to know exactly how long that lasted but i feel like it was about five minutes or something like that and then it kind of switches and the heart rate slows and you get cold. And then the nausea comes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joy, isn't it? Oh, no. But I want it. Personally, I wanted it. Like I kept pushing for point after point after point because I was like, I'm here to move energy. I mm-hmm. want to move mm-hmm. whatever has been physically in me for so mm-hmm. long. I can feel it in there. Get it the fuck out. Because she was like, yeah. you have to purge. I'm like, nah, we doing this. We doing this. Yeah. Um, well, I think and when you start purging, you feel better, right? So yeah, it's the one thing about like it. Instantaneously. It just yeah. starts. And it's that flow. Like I could feel it literally from my root chakra all the way up. And it was just like, goodbye. Oh, that's amazing. Got cleared. Everything got cleared. But. That's, I mean, I'm jealous because I, I I was not able all three times to purge without putting my fingers down my throat. Oh, yeah. And she said that if you're really emotionally blocked, which is, ah, weak, yeah. uh, that can happen. She says, ah, it's more, uh, she sees it more with men, I guess, than women, but I'm very oh. like, masculine energy. You know, I've got the blocks very in my masculine. Absolutely. And so, it, it was a pretty rough experience because I, I sat with the purge for a very long time and I was like, you know, dry heaving, but I just could. And they're like, drink more water. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, just belligerent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a really good image right now. That's so funny. You know, I was like, fun out, huh? but I could just, yeah. I, I mean, I laugh at it. I was like, you just don't care. You know, you're yeah. just like, oh, I don't want water. And they're like, no, it's yeah. good to purge. And, you know, when you're nauseous, it's like the, the weird thing when you're nauseous is like, you know, puking will make you feel better, but you resist it. You know, so I was kind of in that place and, you know, I had gone in with the intention for the session with like energy because I'm, I'm still at the tail end of this chronic fatigue situation and it's been greatly improved, but I wanted to just make more progress with that clearly like leftover lime from the body, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so eventually, um, and they're playing this, you know, very traditional music in the background is very lovely, but eventually she's just like, you know, put your fingers down, stretch your throat. And then I was just like, Rah! like you know, <laughs> just scream puke. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Fuck yeah. Oh, he froze again. A little better. And, uh, but yeah, I definitely noticed that like my throat swelled a bit and my, my, cheeks and, and like, that i was very puffy and i had a frog voice frog mm-hmm. face did you get frog the frog face or whatever frog face and frog voice like I, very different. You, literally everything you had that happened to you and your experience was the opposite of what happened to me oh. every <laughs> last detail like down from the down from how she put it in because mine was slow and mm-hmm. then and mine took a really long time and i was willfully slamming water and it did come up and she actually said no i was like can i like and i was getting to the point where i wanted to and she was like no she's like just wait let it come let it come let it come oh and yeah like, okay and i was laughing through it I, yeah and i don't i yeah i can't i can't remember what i was saying but i was just cursing at myself but in a very funny way and and i finally like put the the bucket down below on a stair below and like started like doing cat cow like pretending to like heave and stuff and it eventually came that way like without sticking my fingers in wow. but then when there was still some in there I could feel it in there I'm like I'm using I'm going I want mm-hmm. it out like I want it out like there's some energy I can feel it like it's my energy and it's been in there my whole life and Interesting. So I, I finally released but I afterwards I went and got to put my what was left in there into the ocean beautiful beautiful house beautiful water yeah and we just had this release and I said goodbye and I and it just like that's kind of where all of the the new energy kind of had space I noticed then that's when I actually released it into the ocean so that was incredibly beautiful 
And then, yeah, I came back in and I I felt like I just had a lot of energy. I actually did a short clip, so I'm not sure when this video, if it'll come out before that, it probably will, but stay tuned for my Cambo video because yeah, it's <laughs> like I like right afterwards, I was like, ping. And I went wow. and recorded. She didn't want me to record during, which is too bad. Right. There was it was quite a lot more entertaining than I thought. But I didn't get frog face, and I was mm -hmm. I thought that would be like a a way that it would express itself and really right. show that it's moved through me. But I didn't get that or the voice thing, which I'm not super sad about. Um, but yeah, but don't be fun. sad. <laughs> it might have freaked me out a little bit. I think one out of the, the one out of the three of us kind of did. But one of my girlfriends, she had done it the weekend prior three times I think so this was her fourth wow. time in a week yeah she's a savage warrior and a delightful soul all at the same time <laughs> um but yeah she wasn't able to purge because she had she had done it consecutively oh yeah right, that right. might have been a thing for you as well it gets more difficult with time I guess yeah yeah I don't know I I mean I wasn't surprised that I struggled with that like it kind of makes a little sense for me like the emotional thing and um, I know a lot of people feel really energized and amazing after Cambo. I felt like a truck hit me, um, which I also wasn't surprised about. I kind of anticipated that just because, I mean, any substance just makes me feel like a truck ran over me. And um, and then so I went home the next day. I felt quite sick, didn't feel great. But then the second day after, I woke up with like this incredible amount of energy and like climbed this mountain and felt so amazing. And I was like, wow, I feel great. This is yeah. crazy. So that was cool because I had asked for energy. And then the second time I when I went in, I asked for surrender. And the second time was the most intense time for me. I got seven dots and um or wait yeah seven dots and it was just really intense because again i couldn't purge and they even commented afterwards that uh they were like you sat with that purge for a very long time wow and so it was painful and um some of the pain was just it, i don't quite know how to describe it but in that experience it's like i could see everything that i was hanging on to all the things. Ah. It was just like this um, awareness. A knowing. Yeah. A knowing. Yeah. But I could almost see it. Like, like it's weird. Yeah. And so that was really, it was hard to see that. Like it was painful to see that because I sort of realized that this had played a lot into my health issues, carrying everything, this very stubborn refusal to let go and also carrying a lot of shit that's not mine. Yeah. So just all that stuff that kind of wasn't serving me. And I realized that, okay, you know, I need to go oh, this time. I'm going to achieve like twice as much. Um, it was a big one once I put the fingers down the throat and kind of a same experience. Like afterwards, just like a truck had hit me, but then the next day I actually felt quite good. Yeah. Um, so that was great. And then the third time was rough and I had a lot of resistance going into it. I actually cried on the way to the third session. I'm just like, I think I talked fine. to you actually do it. seen those days. Oh yeah. Like, or just after and you were like, why am I going again? Yeah. I was yeah. like, what the actual fuck am I doing? <laughs> and it just, um, and she wanted to give me 10 dots and I was like, I don't know. The last one was so, uh, intense. So she gave me nine, but I actually kind of wish she gave me the 10 because Thought maybe it would bring up. I think it would have brought it on. And this time was kind of funny. And I hope your audience doesn't mind TMIs. Um, I don't <laughs> sure this, but it's kind of funny. Thing is TMI um, on the show. <laughs> so, you know, some people will purge through the mouth and other people like purge through the gut, yeah. right? Yeah. And, um, and so all of a sudden I was like, oh, I think I'm going to like have to go to the bathroom. And so they helped me to the bathroom, like in there having like diarrhea. And they're outside the bathroom yeah. singing. Oh, and playing instruments. Oh, I love that. Awesome. That's and you know, beautiful the, shit ever. I know the door is like slightly open and you just don't care. But I remember having this like this moment of clarity where I'm like, well, this is pretty funny. I'm just like shitting myself here. And they're just like, come on, come on, come on, come on. They're playing all the music outside the, the bathroom. And I was like, this is hilarious, but you just don't care. And then they don't care either. You know, they're used to this and whatever. So I guess I did purge on my own, just not yeah. the way I thought it would. It's definitely mm -hmm. a purge, just not in the way that... Not in the way that I expected. Up, but that's, that, <laughs> that's a lot of shit, literally. Yeah, it really was. Like, I think was. that's almost a more intense way to do it because that's moving it through your body mm -hmm. from one end mm -hmm. right to the other rather than you know bringing it up in the other direction I was like, yeah. really worried I was gonna pee my pants while puking I mm -hmm. like I didn't quite think about the other one 
because I have gotten sick before from like party days and, mm-hmm. like, and when I puke, I've like tinkled and when I laugh, I tinkle sometimes. Yeah, I laugh not really hard if I cough. <laughs> like I have a weak bladder floor. No oh, way, like, God. So I like brought my little yoga mat towel with me, and I was like. I'm ready to have a deity. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I was joking about while I was waiting to purge was the deity. It must Oh, my been. God. Uh, so but it was funny. all such, yeah, totally. But it it was all, it all, my body wasn't, my body only used to do that, I think, because I was putting bad toxins into it. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't anything beneficial for my higher good or for my long-term self in fact very detrimental so quite the opposite so i think that's what my body was rejecting in those periods but mm-hmm. this it was so different and i think that's why it was like we'll just let you do your thing and save you from coming in out at all ends and when i did yeah. that last guy it was like it almost did i sat on the toilet with the thing oh yeah bucket, but nothing came with that so i right. sat there for oh, interesting minutes, waiting yeah, nothing quite transpired, but it was a very mild dose. We found out the next day, and that's probably why. That might be why. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. And I had four mm-hmm. cups, so that was a lot. Um, have you found like a circle to sit with for ayahuasca? You know, I have. I've had the invite. I was invited for a weekend in March, and that felt. I was like, nope, I'm not ready. I just got the invite today for the April one, and so now I'm kind of just sitting with that. That's and so, that's so amazing. Yeah, I was a slow can, and um, it's the same facilitator um and that's her primary she primarily facilitates the ayahuasca so i don't know i'm gonna sit with it like i I would like to there's obviously a bit of fear um you know a hesitation uh because it's you know cambo is very fast and and thank god it's fast because you literally could not do it for longer minutes (laughs) no like it's just so right you know not so physically Mm. um but for me, anyways, um, mm-hmm. it wasn't such a physical experience. So the physical experience, it's really hard to sit with that. Like mm-hmm. because maybe it's because I have such an extensive history with hallucinogenics that I didn't mind. But even with the ayahuasca, there wasn't a lot of DMT in it. So for me, sitting with hallucin- like hallucinations, if that's what's happening, is easier for me than sitting with uncomfortability in my body. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that does make sense. And like, I've never, like, when I used to do, like, I've done in the past, I think I did some, like, peyote and, like, acid and I don't know what else, some other stuff. But every time I got, felt, like, the hallucinogen, I'd always just drink more because I was not ever very comfortable with it. I just kind of, like, numb it out a little bit. So I am pretty uncomfortable with the thought of uh, hallucinating alcohol is the crazy. Yeah. Because I was used to that, too, because it was all recreational as well. We definitely share that for sure. Yeah, that'll be, it'll be amazing if you choose to do it. And if not, you'll know when your time comes. Yeah, so I'm going to sit on it. I'll sit on it. Yeah. Do you have, Mm -hmm. like, uh, because I know they fill, they fill up really quickly these days. I know people are just. Yeah. Yeah, people are just really, they're getting in tune with themselves. We've mm-hmm. broken through a couple portals recently, like we've moved into the Age of Aquarius, we've moved through the 222 portal, and I know a lot of energy is shifting, and especially with like, and it's building too, like you can see in our daily political upheavals, it's insane, it's coming from all in. Yes. Um. So mm-hmm. yeah, and I, people are just really starting to gravitate towards the medicine, and, and I know i I was I was called to it and then it kind of evaporated before my very eyes and then I kind of chased it and then it ran away. My calling to do I I was mm-hmm. and then I came home and sat and I was just like, I give. And then it brought itself to me again because yeah. the four calls were just like either not the right time for me or it was full when it was the right time. So it's all about timing and it's all about just yeah making sure that you're in the space for it as well. Yeah, I agree. And I'm just like, you know, I'm going to sit with this April one. And then if I say I, I'm in and it's full, then oh, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait for the May one. You know, like no big deal. It'll always be there. There's like quite a few circles around there. I'm also toying with the idea of doing some Wachuma. I don't know if you've done yeah, that. I actually, I have mm-hmm. been microdosing Wachuma a little bit um, mm-hmm. and just trying that out. I haven't, I, I've been wanting to do um, a ceremony with it, which is in the works, but I've been toying around with just microdosing grandfather, as they call him, mm-hmm. which is the masculine energy to ayahuasca. Are there many circles with Wachuma? And the- yeah, there oh. there seems to be. Yeah, like I have a couple right. friends and I, I like two different friends who talk about circles. I don't know if they're talking about the same circle or separate circles, but um, with elders that they're pretty stoked on and say it's like a really like beautiful ceremony and environment. So I know Wachuma's like, 
sounds a little bit more heart opening, maybe a little less intense. So I'm wondering if maybe that's where it yeah. could start, you know? Yes, it, it's not a bad idea. And and it's also funny to me because it's grandfather and heart opening. You would think mm. that grandmother, but it's like the polar opposites. I remember right. years ago when I was first hearing about them, I was like expecting grandfather to be like maybe the more stern and strict one, but... <laughs> uh, definitely not no very heart opening and and it is a bit more mild from what I gather I've only done small amounts I accidentally did a little bit too much one day in the testing phase to see yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was like oh man I'm just gonna draw today for a while uh, but yeah it was very it was expansive still and still yeah. happening and that's very cool not one yeah. excited for all of your journeys whatever they may be whatever you find fits you and comes to you first and the Kootenays, I'm surprised like that it, it, it wasn't really around 10 years ago. And that goes to show mm -hmm. the shift that we're in right now. You know, there were, mm -hmm. when I, I left in 2010, no, sorry, I moved there in 2010. I left in 2016, right? Mm -hmm. And when I left, there was not in my awareness anyways, anything of the sort. It was a very, it, I don't know if it still is, a very cocaine-driven town. Yeah, I mean, there's it, still that, I would yeah. say. Um, definitely, yeah, there's still like that kind of like dark party scene that yeah. goes on here. I'm, I'm pretty, I would say I'm pretty disconnected. Like, I'm fully unaware of it. I go to bed at 8.30. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, 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 I'm yeah. And uh, and all kinds of interesting people who are very spiritual out there, but also like interesting inventors, like and people doing really interesting things. Like my partner does, um, he does documentary films and stuff like that. And he's always taught. He's like, do you know there's this person here who does this? They're the only person in the world to do this thing. And I'm like, that's so random. Like, random, what? yeah. It's, it's a very eclectic <laughs> group of people. And I I remember reading an old like folk tale. I don't know if it's a folk tale or if it's actual history. Um, but the mm -hmm. reason why Nelson ended up being Nelson, like, and nobody lived in the city of Nelson. People lived in Slocan and other mm -hmm. areas because it was such an intense energy that came yeah. around. Yeah. That people were unable to live in the actual city itself. And mm -hmm. throughout time, obviously, everyone lived in right next to the beautiful lake. So it's really hard to stay away from that area. But I felt mm -hmm. it. I was a complete mess there. Like I I had my business degree. I moved there. I ended up growing weed and partying all the time. And it just like oh, all those years just went like way over my head. I was like, what just happened? Like I went into a weird vortex. Yeah. And just like every party was a vortex too within the vortex mm -hmm. of Nelson because you would get there. Yeah. And like three days later, you're peeling out with like a hundred new friends and just your mind blown. And you're like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to yeah. leave after my parents passed away. They both got sick and that's why I'm, I left. But after they both were gone I was like I don't want to go back there like I can't like I just can't you know yeah you know it's fair and I think if I hadn't had my health issues so like that's what pulled me out of partying very quickly yeah. kind of necessity and then I just kind of uh, started a new type of lifestyle but yeah I was definitely like in that vortex and it's very easy to get sucked in and party and go on vendors and do all the drugs and abuse everything and hang out with sketchy characters like you know was definitely sketchy and there. interesting yeah. though i met a lot yeah of people sketchy people and interesting don't get friends with it, but it's also funny because a lot of the people that i was friends with throughout that time or made close connections with throughout that time have also done the pendulum swing mm -hmm. and are into plant medicine and health and understanding the disconnect between like cocaine and drinking <laughs> excessively yeah. and spirituality yeah, yeah. you know and that that connection has been made about the disconnection so i am still close with a, quite a few of quite a few people from from that mm -hmm. zone and that time period, but it's beautiful to watch the transitions happening. Mm -hmm. And it oh, is. one thing we didn't really touch on actually today were removals of blocks, I guess. Mm, yeah. Um, so before, because I know you have to leave in about probably how much time do you have? About 20 minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so just to shift gears quickly, and I do that sometimes on the show, so I'm going to edit squirrel. <laughs> but <laughs> just to, yeah, but for mm -hmm. like functional day-to-day -day processes, like say yeah. you're going through your day and you, you get like stifled or you're unable of how to, how to get through a task or you're just not feeling inspired. Do you have something that you personally do um, or you tell your clients to do that has been effective for unleashing these blocks that come up with us? 
Yeah. So I actually got into breath work just over um, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. So again, Ruby, my gateway drug, <laughs> she introduced me to breath work. Um, yeah. And I started doing uh, the Marcel Hoff style, which is similar to Wim Hof. They're brothers. They had both have breath work programs. Where it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So Marcel Hoff and he, he seems to do everything in Bali and then Wim's in like fucking Europe and like crazy yeah. extreme yeah um, but I started doing that and just found it really energizing which is great at a time where I was struggling with energy and then um ended up discovering Samantha Skelly and she has the pause breathwork school and so I did a I believe it was six six or seven month facilitator program in 2021 and um just for my own person stuff now I do still facilitate a little bit like I do some like in-person group stuff just for charity essentially in Nelson. And um, I do it in my business program with my health coaches as well, because again, it, it really helps move through the blocks. And so um, I try to like once or twice a month do, oh, <laughs> my dog, she, oh, yeah. she broke in. Hey, it happens. It, it, um, yeah. <laughs> She's like breath work. Yes. No. I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. You need to do it, Peanut. <laughs> yeah. So I do the meditative, which is longer where you're doing the uh, intentional breath pattern for 20 30 40 sometimes more minutes wow you go pretty you can i get seriously high from that like it's wow. very much like i i will hallucinate i'll go to i've like astral traveled with it like it's very wow it's yeah it, cool. it's real cool but um wow. yeah for the blocks that come up through the day i do something called integrative breath work which is we're in for less than eight minutes and I'll just do, because really like when you're experiencing blocks or you're anxious or you're experiencing imposter syndrome, whatever it is, it's because you're in your brain, because yeah. you're in your head. And our, our yeah. brains are amazing and, and uh, also very hard to deal with at the same time because that's what makes you spiral. And so yeah. the breath work just gets you back into your body. Um, and even like doing it for five minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's just like back in my body everything's okay. I feel focused, grounded, and now I can kind of go about my day. So I'll do that. Um, I do it with my morning ritual and um, I may do it throughout the day as needed as well. I, I teach that yeah, to my students as well. To, if you have videos of your of your own or that you enjoy watching or any, mm -hmm. anything like that, please send them along and I'll put them in the Yeah, notes. absolutely. Um, yeah, because I've been meaning to. I keep meeting all of these wonderful breath workers that keep inviting me to circles and doing this and I haven't, I have not tried that yet. I do tiny, like just my own little patterns that I've kind of invented myself mm -hmm. um, that I don't know if have any merit, but they help me. But I would, it would be awesome to actually connect with that more in a professional so please send along anything yeah you know? absolutely and another thing that I noticed that you did this morning and we didn't really get to touch on too was the we talked about it briefly but the repe mm -hmm. how do you pronounce it I, I've done yeah it. so you pronounce it hape but it's it's spelled r-a-p-e with an apostrophe on the e unit it's also from the amazon and again ruby um she's so much <laughs> <laughs> sick to me I know you you would you would love her you should follow her, have like her a, the show. <laughs> oh you should invite her she's badass Absolutely. she's wonderful um but when I was supposed to go to Austin Texas I was going to be doing the um cambo session with two other women who were in that leadership program with me and so they ended up doing it. And then we connected after and I heard about their experience. And my friend Shanae had told me that she, uh, Ruby had administered the hop aid prior to, um, yes, that's how I to the it. Cambo. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that, and people do it prior to ayahuasca, I believe too. Oh yeah. Or maybe during, I think maybe some people do it during, but anyways, she said, you know, it was really amazing. It just like dropped my walls. It just like got me into my body and just like instant grounding. And I was like, well, that sounds like something I need. <laughs> so Ruby yeah. sent me, yeah, so Ruby sent me the little pipe. It's a little, it's called a creepy. It's just, um, it's like a little V shaped and one end goes into your mouth. The other, oh, no, I was going to say, cause mine was administered. So I didn't really get a good look at your, did they just blow it up your yeah, nose sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So you can, essentially you just blow it into your own nose. Yeah. Wow. Well, that I, thought. I know it's very <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I never thought I'd put it. It's a, it's a type of tobacco, which yeah, is yeah, it's it, funny because yeah. it's quite like it's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for mm -hmm. me. I, I'm not sure it what is. dosage I had, but it was yeah. a shock. And then it is a bit of a shock because it burns and it goes straight to your head. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I just kind of put a little two little pea sized stuff and then I put it in the creepy. You you can connect, uh, push it against your heart and your third eye, make your intention. And then you go left nostril, right nostril. Um, and I usually like, will start like some sort of like guided meditation. And so instantly it burns and then it, you feel it in your head and it's really intense and uncomfortable, but it's quick. And then 
And then you kind of go, you get this, it's very intense. Like it's like, cause I, I, I remember trying cigarettes when I was, um, in high school and it's just like this feeling instantly washes over you. It's similar to that, but not gross. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. cigarettes not are really, cold, like, was so like the, dirty and you're like, really, yeah. uh, but this is like, their way. Yeah. yeah, like a similar feeling, but beautiful. And, yeah. um, it's it's very intense when it first starts but it like just you just go into your heart space that's all I can describe it and I feel like when I do it that I just have like God shining through me that's how I can kind of describe it it only lasts about 10-15 minutes and it it kind of it's really intense and then it dissipates and then you usually I mean some people leave the hobby in their nostrils the whole time um I think that would probably make it more intense um yeah. I do it I think maybe 30 60 seconds and then I just I have my I blow it out of my nose yeah I did um, I did about the same thing, yeah so yeah yeah because I want to blow like, it through it just, my nose and yeah and it just I, it was like it was clog it felt clogging but as soon as I did get what rid of what was here everything that was happening here but I was mm -hmm. able to focus on it more because I wasn't yeah. comfortable does that make sense or I was like, able to appreciate it more because I wasn't yeah absolutely is yeah, it so comfortable you can I breathe know. better or there it is yeah. yeah I can actually be yeah in the rather than just focusing on my nose Teach the rest. <laughs> I'm sure to leave yeah but that was yeah I, I would think like I think you can do like a lot bigger doses and then that sort of thing like I, I, I'm very kind of new to this but I do a little um 10 minute breath work session and then I do the hopping and go into meditation and uh not every day um but i would say i've been doing it maybe like two three times a week and um I, I think like it helps me to know what it feels like to be in my body because i don't know if i've really known how that feels because i i don't know if i've ever i've probably done it for really fleeting moments in my life but it, it's good to like show myself what that feels like because i think it's going to help me like um embody that a little bit more uh, without it Definitely. Absolutely. And the more you get used to, yeah, you can pull yourself back the more you get used to it, just as you were saying, because mm -hmm. you know that feeling and you're like, oh, feels like home, body home. I can ground myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I think right now we're just in that phase of experimentation and and trying new things and putting ourselves into these situations and with different medicines in order to find ways that we can just exist more in a consistent level that way, I feel like. And there's just a lot of a lot of toying around and seeing and seeing how that feels, you know, yeah. how I feel about it anyway. It's like it's it's not something I really I don't want to transition from being, you know, my old retired party girl self into consistently doing plant medicine all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to just integrate the lessons in my daily life and hopefully just move forward with nothing. That <laughs> would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, exactly. A personal but, journey with it. But, yeah. But I think just to kind of like, yeah, I love that. But learn the lesson and um, maybe you just don't need it anymore because you can access that um, exactly. on your own. And I mean, that's something I love about the breath work because I know the woman who uh, I vis uh, facilitates my breath work sometimes just I go, there's a salt cave in Nelson and she does it within the oh, okay. in the Himalayan yeah. salt cave. Yeah, it's new within the past few years. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Very cool. And um, she was saying how a lot of her teachers used to do a lot of plant medicine and now they only do breath work because you can access a lot of the same states. Yeah, it? exactly. So yeah. It's very cool. I've heard, mm -hmm. I've heard that as well. Yeah. I actually mm -hmm. just connected um, at my ayahuasca ceremony right next to me. Happened to be a breathwork coach and her and I have connected quite well. She is just a phenomenal human. And and then I met a bunch of her breathwork colleagues as well. She had a little party and I got to meet a whole bunch of them. And everyone was just so lovely and grounded. And, you know, and it just it says a lot for the practice when you can mm -hmm. see in a vast array of humans being quite grounded, but yet still like super fun and boisterous and out there, you know, like yeah. just because people do the work, it doesn't mean that we're getting all freaking serious and losing touch with our silly and boisterous side. And I think I know for me personally, I was kind of afraid to get into these modalities because I was like, oh, no, I'm going to lose my what was just my attachment to my ego as far as who I am, but it still brings me a lot of joy to be happy and silly and fun, you know, like that's just, that's what saved me throughout a lot of my hardships growing up. So I'm like, I don't want to lose that part. I don't want to get like in this serious realm, but that's just not what happened. Not for me anyways. And I've yeah, I mean, me neither. Of the people I... doing the work, they're just as silly and just as fun and just as out there. So, and you too, totally. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I think I just get weirder. <laughs> and I'm I'm down with it. I'm cool with it. Oh my God. I concur. I concur. I think so too. That's way too great. I absolutely love it. So when the audience wants to connect with you, because I don't want to keep you past our time, how can they find you and where can they find you and work with you? And yeah, so, your course too. Also touch on your course. Sorry. Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, uh, the best way to connect with me is Instagram. Uh, my handle is just at Kendra Perry Inc. At Kendra Perry Inc. Uh, that's where I'm the most active. I I answer my DMs. So that's yeah, probably the best way to you're connect with them. Fluidly. Yeah. You're yes. I'm very watching all of your content. You always have inspiring <laughs> and interesting stuff. And today, just like even watching your your half days, like mm -hmm. I, you know, it made me feel grounded just watching you. So definitely oh, check her out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if anyone is um, a health coach, health and wellness coach, um, my program is Health Coach Accelerator. And I just teach um, new health coaches or uh, coaches in the personal development space build the framework for their six-figure business. So awesome. we use uh, free organic marketing strategies to essentially cool. help you gain visibility and world clients into your program and move towards making those 10K months. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah, and I know how successful you've been at that and creating wealth for other people. So way to go, girl. That's so rad. So happy for you. And wow, we've like, kind of changed a bit since last time we saw each other. So it's also yeah. <laughs> such a blessing to see you in this way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show and so great to connect with you again. I love it. Yeah, you too. Excellent. Definitely. And I will be in the Coonies in April. I can't say why because this will be before um apparently a birthday party that is supposed to be a secret so i may be there <laughs> i may be there in april and i'll definitely have to look yeah and let's connect in real life oh i'd love that get into some get into some happy oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome well thanks again and thank you everyone who joined us today and if you got some value from this episode please don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and show a girl some love it's so great to connect with everyone in the community and find kendra and yeah thanks so much and we'll see you guys in the next couple weeks bye <laughs> bye <laughs>